class and every single pasuk and be able to visually look at it, whether it's gematrias, whether it's um, psukim, word connections. It's very important to be able to visually see it. And I know for when I speak to a lot of different people, that's always one of the things on their minds. You know, sometimes I try to go in at a good pace, but sometimes it's like, wait, what did we just say before? I need to go back and look at it. So what we, we're going to do tonight is besides for all you guys here today, um, where you have in, uh, all the proof in front of you, you have the text, which is with you. And then you're going to have the black, as you can see, the black uh, pamphlet. That is going to be constant source after source as we go through everything, learning the actual Torah. Now, one more thing that's important that everybody needs to know is Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, when it comes to Likutei Moharan, imagine my conversation with you is... I'm just a box of Torah. Like, I think Torah all day long. And my conversation with you is going to be like, Pasuk from Gemara, Pasuk from Tehillim, Pasuk from Kumash. I'm just talking to you like Torah. That's my conversation with you. And I'm going to give you a message based upon me putting all these sukkim together from different angles of the Torah and literally connect them. So he has, like I said, Gemara, Tehillim, Zohar, Kumash, Tikkune Zohar, Kabbalistic concepts from the Arizal, on and on and on and on. So it's an incredible thing uh, to go through. And so we're going to go through this together. Um, and again, if you don't understand it, my suggestion is it's okay. It's also for them, some people here will be their first time ever learning Likutei Moharan. So it's a different world and you kind of have to, it's like riding a bike. You got to have to get used to it as Rabbi Nachman takes you, right? Also, one more thing I want to say is that a lot of people reached out to me they're going to be watching this live. Some some of the people are having are sick or COVID, etc. But a lot of people reached out to me, and I haven't been in classes in a, several weeks. And they tell me all the time that their connection from Hashem is diminishing. Several people have called me already on this, and I I tell you that when a person is connected to the tzaddik, you have light, you have energy, you have life. It's very important to be always connected to the tzaddik, whichever tzaddik that is, you know, but I can tell you that it's a very important thing. This is what gives you chiyos. This is what gives you life. And the more, the more you don't plug in, the more you feel disconnected from Hashem, whether it's in your daily avoda with Hashem, whether it's with davening, whether it's your connection in general with other people, it's so important to always connect. So I would say that for those that are here tonight, I, I hope that you can join me on this journey weekly as we go through chapter 47. Tonight's class is just going to be one section of chapter 47 because we're going to go so much in depth. Normally, my classes go a little bit longer. Part two of this class is going to be specifically, we're going to be doing the Siyum for Masek and Megillah. Uh, from Hashem, we have a member of the 8-Minute Daf, which is where I uh, learn our daily classes with Rabbi Eli Stefanski. And of course, Hashem had to bring somebody out of nowhere, big representative of Amy Duff to be here with me as well, which is so cool. I'm very excited about that. Um, as Dr. Shem, we're going to do a Siyum. Siyum means we're finishing a chapter in the Gemara. We do a big Kaddish at the end. And again, all of this should be in the merit of my mother, Deborah Fega, but Shmuel should have an Aliyah from all this. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to now put this on the board for all you people looking online. And we're going to start off like this. Okay, so here we go. You guys have the text in front of you. We're looking at the white page first, okay? Tonight's topic deals with something I feel like we're all going to be able to deal with on a daily level. What is it? Eating, right? So I want to say to everybody right now, there's a lot of food. Eat a lot of food. Tonight's Torah will say, do not eat a lot of food. <laughs> so it's kind of contra, counterproductive to what we're trying to do here tonight, but... But we're going to learn one thing. If anybody ever wanted to lose weight, this class, I promise you, will keep you, will keep you on the radar, will keep you in check, will make you think one, twi twice, three times about eating that extra piece of food. How much are you eating? This class, this Torah will make you think about it consistently. Okay? So it's really, really awesome. I suggest that, you know, anybody who's right now, this is, by the way, I'm speaking to myself. Lord knows, my wife knows as well. I need to lose a lot of weight right now. So <laughs> it's just perfect timing that I'm, that I'm learning this with all you guys. Okay, so here we go. Rabbi Nachman begins chapter 47, Simon Mem Zayin. He always starts off with a Pasuk, okay? The Pasuk 
This time it starts off like this. He brings you a pasuk from the book of Joel, Yoel. What does that mean? This is a specific pasuk that talks about, says, you will eat and be satiated and praise the name of God, your Lord, who performed for you such wondrous deeds. Never again will my people be ashamed. Now, right? you will eat and be satiated. Normally that deals with what? When a person's, that's the main Indian, so to speak, of when you have to do Birkat Amazon, a person has to feel satiated. The rabbi said specifically that when you are eating bread, it's, and we're going to go into the differences right now, the idea is you should feel full. Okay? And that's, we learn from this, the idea also of saying Birkat Amazon, the importance of that. Now Rabbi Nachman goes to work. Rabbi Nachman begins and he says, Mishahu Meshuka Betava Tahila Beyadua. Shehu rachok me'emet. Someone who is so, the wording is here, steeped in the desire for eating, he's certainly far from the truth. Someone who is, and, and, and I, I also want to be fair, we're human beings here, okay? But also remember, we need to aspire to constantly grow in the path of Kedusha and holiness. So when Rabbi Nachman is talking, he's not just talking to a tzaddik, he's talking to all of us here, okay? What does it mean a person who's steeped in the desire for eating? You're far from the truth. Means when a person's I'm I'm eating food, I'm eating food for pleasure. I'm always thinking about food. Food is my life. Right? Big no-no to the foodies, but that's the truth. Okay. If on my mind I'm I can't wait to have that steak because it's so good, and right, and then I go and what happens when I sit down? I I, I don't even it's not even about like I need to wash my right. Think about Asav. Asaph, remember he says he has that ball, Yaakov brings it to him. What is he? he scarfs it? The wording is he literally scarfs it down. We are the opposite of Asaph. We don't want to be like Asaph, right? So Rabbi Nachman's telling you, you, if you are like that, if you're so much into eating, you are very far from Emet, from the truth. Ubeyadua, this is scary. Shadinim Shorimala. If you are doing this type of eating, you are going to be beset by judgments. Dinim, judgments are difficulties, challenges, hardships, right? And usually challenges come from what? From sin, right? We sin, challenges come our way. It's just the way of the way of the law. That's how it works, right? You overeat, you are bringing judgments upon yourself. And if that's not bad enough, it's also a sign of poverty as well. On top of that, then what's also going to happen, you're going to come to ridicule and shame, meaning it's you're going to be embarrassed. It brings you a pasuk from Tehillim. Moshe Katuv, Kurum Zulut Libne Adam. Kurum, that which is exalted, is degraded by the sons of man. This is the Pasuk in Tehillim. That which is exalted is degraded by the sons of man. What does that mean? In general, Kurum, something that's exalted is degraded by the sons of man. It's simply saying, you know, when I'm going to tell somebody, I got to go wake up, I don't know, at 4.30 in the morning to go to the mikvah because then I need to learn Torah because I need to dive in Nates. And the guy's like, <laughs> what a, you know, come on, really? Right? The general consumer will say, you're crazy. What are you doing? At least, if anything, I don't know, wake up to go to an 8.30 menu or something like that. That's on a general, let's say, uh, orthodox observant level. But we could talk about it from somebody who's not even connected to Hashem. Anything that's on a high level is usually looked down upon, like, oh, whatever. And usually we find it's always the flip end that anything that's materialism, uh, you know, anything that deals with anything that deals with celebrities and, and all that world, that's all. Oh, now, that's the high. That's the best. That's what everybody wants to be. But spirituality is usually the bottom. Right? That which is exalted is degraded by the sons of man. So he, Rabbi Nachman continues and he says, once a person has to come onto human beings, his face changes like a kroom. I actually have, you know what, I'm going to show this to you guys because it's fun. There's a kind of a bird called a kroom. Look at this. I'll show you. I didn't know about this. I just kind of looked it up myself. And I'll show you guys here on the screen so you can see how cool this is. 
Let's see here. This is not normal, but I just want to show you because what Rinathan is talking about, he's talking about this specific bird, right? A croom. You see here, this croom is an actual bird, and the bird changes colors. That's a real bird, which is very fascinating, that the bird is constantly changing colors, okay? That's the idea of what Rabbi Nachman was talking about, okay? You can see how cool that is. So, going back to this. Now, now that you know when you see it, when you're looking at the actual croom on the actual letters here, you know what we're talking about. So now Rabbi Nachman's saying, once a person has to come on to human beings, if I got to go and ask people for money, to lend me money, I have news for you. That's embarrassing, right? And what happens, what's the concept of embarrassment? You turn, your face turns colors. Someone makes fun of you, you're turning red, you're turning, turning purple, you're turning all the colors of the sun, just like a croom, just, just like that bird, right? And he's saying, he's, why is he bringing that up? Because he's saying that when you are overeating, poverty comes your way, that's one. You're going to be ridiculed and shamed. It's embarrassing. And you're going to be like this crew. Crew means that which is exalted, right? Which means what? Crew means, room means, actually, in Hebrew means high level. Crew means, boom, you drop down to the bottom. That's the concept of a crew. You went from a high level, marom. Marom means great, large, marom, the same root word, marom, crew, down to the bottom. Okay, and that's the idea of this bird. A bird is actually called a croom. And the bird changes colors in his face, just like a person changes colors in their face when they're embarrassed. That's the concept that Rabbi Nachman's talking about. So now we continue. And now we're going to start plugging into all the stuff that we have here on the, on the side notes. Rabbi Nachman now continues and he says, Vida, you should know. Mishachu meshaber tabat achila. Somebody who breaks the desire for eating, Hakadosh Baruch Hu Ose Ayadom of Tim, Hashem, the Holy One, He performs miracles through Him. If I learn how to control my eating and eat on a high level of kedusha and holiness, which by the way, what does that mean? It means like right now, right? And again, I said this joking around in the beginning of the class, but it's the truth, right? If I'm going to sit down here for a seudat mitzvah. That's why I'm here, right? I'm here to learn Torah and do a Siddhat Mitzvah in memory of my mom, yeah? The point is, let's wash, let's eat bread. Not because I need to have bread because oh, I'm so hungry and then I'm going to have to It's because I want to praise Hashem. That's why I want to have the bread. It's a different mindset. It's a different shift of consciousness, right? So here, Rabbi Nachman says, when a person is now breaking that mode of like only eating for just pure enjoyment purposes and not for because I have to serve Hashem, because I need to be healthy, right? And not overeating, just enough to get me by because that's what I need, right? Hashem will perform miracles through him. He brings you a pasuk. Ki racha. Our sages taught, and we learned this in, first page right there, and you look at your notes, in Deuteronomy. Asher lo So it says here, God... Look at the Pasuk here, and I'm going to show you all you guys here also on the screen as well. You can see here. Ki Hashem Elokeim hu alokei alokim ve'adonei ha'adonim ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor v'nera asher lo isa. Here's the key word. You can put it in pink. For you guys, it's outlined in a different gray color. Lo isa fanim ve'lo ikach chad, which means what? The Lord your God is God supreme and Lord supreme, the great, the, great, the mighty, the awesome God. And here's the wording that Rabbi Nachman is bringing to you who shows no favor, and he takes no bribe. Okay, so the key words that we have to learn from what we're looking at is this. Look at the word. It says, lo isa fanim. Fanim comes from the word face. Now, when it says he shows no countenance, what does that mean that he shows no countenance? He's not, quote, unquote, looking at you. Shows no countenance means panim, looking, He's not looking at you. Okay. Then there's another Pasuk. It's weird because Rabbi Nachman is telling you that he shows no countenance. That's one way of speaking about Hashem looking at you. And then he brings you another Pasuk. Uktiv. Ista Hashem Pana Belecha. Next page. Everybody who's looking on, turn to the next page. Look at the back. Right. When do we say this specific 
Uh, Pasuk, we know this, right? We talk about this every time we have the Kohanim. If you're Spartic, you're getting this blessed every day, right? This is the Kohanim. Hashem v'yasem lecha shalom. Now on the flip end, we see the same, look at the word, panav. Hashem is looking at you. You want Hashem to look at you. What happens when he looks at you? He's bestowing favor upon you. Right? He's going to grant you peace. By the way, there's no higher blessing than peace. So we have two different panavs here. We got the, the one that he doesn't look at you. And then you have the other panav. Hashem panav elecha. Right? So which one is it? Right? So Rabbi Nachman says and continues, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Hashem says, Eich lo esa lachem panim. Ani amarti, ve'achalta, ve'sabata barakta, ve'hem medaktikin al atzman b'kazayit u'beku b'beitza. Hashem says, how can I not favor them? A.K.A. the Jewish people. How can I, I, how can I not favor them? I said, and you will eat and be satiated and blessed, yet they are stringent with themselves on an olive's worth as well as on an egg's worth. This is the Pasuk. We learned this in Masachet Brachot in the Gemara. Rabbi Nachman is bringing you a story from the Gemara, but based upon a Pasuk in Deuteronomy. You guys have that in front of you right there. And now look at this, okay? Look how interesting, what is what is Hashem saying, okay? In Birkat HaMazon, right? What did I say in the beginning? Ve'achalta ve'sabata uberachta, which means what? You will eat and be satiated and blessed, which means what? If I'm going to have Birkat HaMazon, if I'm going to eat, do a Birkat HaMazon and bless Hashem at the end, I should eat a lot so that I am full, like literally full. I am satiated. I don't, that's it. I'm good. Yeah? But the rabbi said, no, 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 no. We have more opinions here. There are some say that if you have 60 grams, which is the size of an egg, okay, that is enough for Bikara Mazan. Okay? That's not a lot of food. And even less than that, there's opinions that say, 30 grams, which is the size of an olive. If you eat an olive size amount of bread or an egg size of bread, that's enough for you to say Birkat Amazon. Okay? Fascinating. So you know what Hashem says? And that's what it says in Masachet Brachot. The rabbis bring down, they bring the story. The fact that the Jewish people are so stringent, they know that says you're supposed to be satiated in full. But no, 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 no. They just want to bless me just alone because they want to have this little bit amount of olive or this amount of an egg's worth of bread. God's like, that's amazing. Like, I love that, he, that they want to do that. Look at the wording he says. How can I not favor them? Like, and if you see, look at the pasuk that I put on the bottom. It says it in English. When they did that, they're doing this concept of going beyond the exactness of judgment. Rabbi Nachman says, we see that favor, Hashem says, how can I not favor them? They don't even want to overeat. And they do it. Why are they doing it? Just so they can bless me. So he's saying, we see then that favor results from breaking the desire for eating. Amazing. And you see also, what, what's the opposite of what I said? If you overeat, what did Rabbi Nachman say was going to happen to you? You're going to get judgments on you. It's scary. <laughs> Right, but if you under eat, it's the, look at the word. We are now going beyond the exactness of judgment. Ju the, the judgment says, "I eat, I'm full." I th Hashem, thank you. Hashem's like, "Okay, that's awesome. You're still blessing me, amazing." But I'm like, "No, I don't even want to eat so much. Just want enough." Hashem is like, "Oh, you're going beyond the exactness of judgment. You're going way beyond the law. What's normal? I'm going to go for you now. I'm going to town for you. I'm going to do a miracle for you." Mida kenege mida, thank you. Mida kenege mida means action for an action, or right, a good action for a good action, so to speak, or it could be also the negative as well. But in this case, Hashem loves that. Cool so far? Okay. Rabbi Nachman continues and he says, Perush. I will hide my countenance from them, and they will be food for the enemies. Um, 
Okay, so look at this Pasuk in Deuteronomy. Again, you guys have it in front of you, right? And if you look at that Pasuk, if you look at the actual uh, flyer that we have, little plant that we have there, he says like this. Look at the Pasuk first in Deuteronomy. It says, and I have the full Pasuk here. Like you have your cut-up version. I'm showing you the whole thing. The Lord says to Moses, you are soon to lie with your fathers. This people will thereupon go astray after the alien gods in their midst and the land that they're about to enter. They will forsake me. They're not going to remember me. And they're going to break my covenant that I made with them. Okay? So first of all, Hashem is telling Moshe, oh, by the way, right? You, you know, the people are not, they're not going to listen to me and my rules and my laws. Okay? And they forgot my covenant. Then it says, then my anger will flare up against them and I will abandon them. And I am, here's the key word here, and I'm going to hide my countenance from them. I'm not going to show them my face. And th- and here and here's amazing why Rabbi Nachman is bringing this. Look what it says in the Pasuk. And they will be food for their enemies. And many evils and troubles shall befall them. The key word Rabbi Nachman is showing you here is, and they will be, I'm going to hide my countenance. I'm not going to look at them, which we don't want. That's not a good thing. And they will be food for their enemies. So Rabbi Nachman says, what does that mean that they're going to be food for their enemies? It literally means what you see here now in the next page of the flyer. I will hide my countenance because they will be food. They will be food. They are literally only thinking about food. And I put there a beautiful picture of a, of a man who looks like a hamburger because you are what you eat. You are the food, right? Rabbi Nachman's taking that puzzle. What a coincidence that it's talking about hiding your countenance connected with food. Huh. And that's in Deuteronomy. Unbelievable that he's bringing that from, from the actual Chumash to show you that that is literally it. I'm not going to show you my face if you're into food, period. Rabbi Nachman continues and he says, <clears throat> and therefore, it says, that's the explanation. Because of the desire for eating, he's going to hide his countenance from them. Now we go to a different topic. Rabbi Nachman now brings another idea. And this concept now, very important, to jump into Rabbi Nachman's world. We are now to, about to go into a concept of learning how to jump from one concept to another concept to another concept to another concept, and he's going to connect them straight. So you have to be able to follow along. I did my best that I can. You're going to see. We're going to talk about it several times. But this is an, one of the most important ways Rabbi Nachman teaches Torah. You have to learn how to bounce from one idea to one idea to an idea, and they're all connected. They're all the same. Okay? So here we go. So Rabbi Nachman now says, this concept of a shining countenance, shining countenance, Hashem is looking at you. Hu tikkun amen. That's known as truth. Okay. What do we mean by that? So if you guys look at the actual, again, let's go back to the actual slides. Like one that says, or hapanim, light of the face. You guys see that? Very important. So we're going to learn some Kabbalistic ideas. They may be a little, a little bit lofty, but we're just really going to get to the point of everything. So there's a concept called the Orha Panim. Orha Panim is this concept of the light of the face, right? And he's connecting light of the face with the word of truth, okay? Rabbi Nachman teaches in a different chapter in Likutei Moharan, chapter 182, and he says that truth, emet, is the actual countenance of all the countenances of holiness. So he basically says that everything in this world has an essential feature that makes it stand out. Like that is who they are, right? So for example, in a person, when you think about Jim, I don't give me your name, right? When I think about Jim, what do I think about? Oh, that's his face. Like I know him by face, right? The face is what represents the essence of the person, right? That's your face. So here, we, he goes with that same idea in the same concept with Hashem. We have a Pasuk. I put it there on, on, the, on, the, on the notes as well. Seek his face always. It's a psalm and Tehillim. What does that mean? 
Seek his face always. David Amalek is saying that. Seek Hashem's countenance only. Why? Because that's the essential feature of the way we can identify with him. So we have to think about Hashem and, so to speak, connection with Hashem as this concept of countenance, looking at you, the face. Okay? Then we have a Pasuk from Breshid Rabbah. Breshid Rabbah says also, regarding the concept of truth, God, they call the truth is God's seal and insignia. What's God's seal? This is my representation. This is who I am. So the Midrash says already, another way we know Hashem equals truth. That's my essence. This is who I am. An insignia. Boom. So there's another, another proof, so to speak. So we see here there's this concept of truth and your and face. Now, when it comes to another Pasuk, we have some proof here also from Rab Nasan of Breslov. Rab Nasan of Breslov has an incredible book called Likutei Halachot, which is all the laws of the Shulchan Aruch explained Kabbalistically using the Torah of Rabbi Nachman. And he says a beautiful Pasuk. He says, he who succeeds, it's on, the, on your thing, he who succeeds in identifying the truth recognizes that God is the creator whose divine providence governs everything in the world. This knowledge is the or hapanim, the light of the face, the countenance of holiness, which when recognizes causes one to be filled with the shining countenance. So therefore, plug in your mind, concepts and ideas, shining countenance, light of the face, truth, Hashem looking at you. We go to the next slide, right? There's another concept that Rizal brings down. There's this concept of the 370 lights of the face. Deep concepts. I'm going to try to simplify it as simple as possible. These 370 lights of the face. What does that equal to? It equals to the famous 13 attributes of mercy, right? Which we say, Tachanun every day. Hashem, Hashem, Kel Rachum Mechanun. Erech Apaim, Rav Chesed, Ve'emet. It's a key word here. Right? We say this every day. This concept of the 370 lights of the face of the Arizal talks about, he says that's like the 13 attributes of mercy, right? And the Arizal says in the book, Etz Chaim, Shar HaKavanot, big books, lots of heavy stuff, not to go into today, but the basic idea, right? Arizal says, Or HaPanim corresponds to what? The attribute of Emet. So once again, it's kind of like extra, I'm giving you extra deep, deep insight. So when Rabbi Nachman just said the Pasuk, this is the explanation of, I will hide my countenance from them. I'm sorry. This is the explanation of um, a shining countenance is a rectification known as the truth. If you read that without knowing into what does it mean, a shining countenance and truth, you're like, okay, I just went, I just showed you four different examples, how truth and emet is connected with the shining countenance of Hashem. Okay, I went through four different examples just to show you that, which is incredible, right? Now, that being said, we know the concept of shining countenance equals truth. Rabbi Nachman now continues. We go back to the actual text. And he says, Sorry, Yaakov, and he brings you a posok. This is the aspect now, new, new plug and play, new idea, Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov is this same aspect of truth. Why? He brings you a pasuk from the book of Mika. The famous pasuk. We say this every day in davening. Titen emet le Yaakov. The pasuk goes chesed le Abraham. Right? So Rabbi Nachman says, wait a second. Oh, okay. So emet and ya. If you have two words, is a way of learning Torah. If you have emet if, in a pasuk. If you have two words that are like together or like almost in the same sentence, you're allowed to use them as a connection to teach you that they're connected. Titan emet or Yaakov. Both words are connected. Yaakov and emet are connected. Okay. So what does that mean? <clears throat> so Yaakov represents a lot of things. But if you take a look, if you take a look, you know, we'll, we'll go there afterwards like that. Not yet. So Yaakov represents truth. He represents Emet. Next concept. Then he says, Ki Yaakov who, sorry, Yaakov, tefillin. And this is an aspect of tefillin. So just to recap, 
He said, countenance of the face, truth, Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov represents truth. So Yaakov. Next, Tefillin, number four. What's the deal with Tefillin? So he says, Because Yaakov is a concept of Tiferet. Take a look, guys. This is like my favorite thing in the whole world is the Sphera chart. Okay? Let's look at it together. This is very, very cool. You're going to learn something new tonight. For those that don't know anything about spheras, can I get one of these copies for a second? Because I want to show you something very important. If you know your, if you know your sphera chart, amazing. If you don't, just what does it mean? What does this mean? Okay? Hashem brings down Shefa, bounty, light to this world. Okay? It comes all the way from the top, from the concept of Keter, from the concept of crown, all the way up here. And it's like a ping pong ball. It goes boop, 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 boop. And Malchut, which is right here in the bottom, that's where we are. We receive the light all the way down here in Malchut. Okay? Now, Chochma Bina Da'at, a.k.a. Chabad, right? That is your head. That is your mind, right? These are higher level concepts of Hashem. Ches, now, also we have to look at this as a human body. So the human body will say, this is my head. This is my crown. Chesed. Chesed is a representation of your right hand. That's why always we, if you don't know which way to go, turn right. Right? Right always goes first in all aspects of halacha. Chesed, chesed, chesed. A.K.A. who is a representation of chesed? Abraham Abinu. So he's on the right. Gevura, which is Itzhak Abinu. Gevura is difficulty, it's challenges, it's judgment, it's it's, it's um, strict, it's discipline. That's Gevura. That's representative of Itzhak Abinu right here. And Tiferet, right here in the middle, that's Yaakov. Yaakov is like, you don't want to be too Mr. Chesed, and you don't, definitely don't want to be too Mr. Gevura. You need to learn how to be in the middle. If you give too much, they'll run all over you. If you're very difficult in, in judgment and, and strict, guess what? They're going to hate you. So it, it, you have to learn how to play a fine balance between both. Okay? Now, just one more thing. It's important that we, we always talk about this all the time, and I always like saying it over and over again. You see how the body flows down, right? Neitzah, Chod, and you have the Yisod. Yisod is represented by Yosef HaTzadik, okay? Yisod is also represented by the Tzadik. Yisod is also your private part. If this right here is not in check, if this specific part in, in a person's body, if you are not keeping holiness and Kedusha in here, this is the last filter before the light of the bounty flows down into this world. So if you don't have this in check, the bracha is not flowing, Okay. Just a very important concept because I always find it's like people always seem to forget. Like that is the most, that's why this is like the key of everything. It's the foundation. It holds everything up. Now, we're going to learn a new Kabbalistic concept. Okay. Now, if you see Chesed, Gevura, Tiferet, Neitzah, Chod, and Yisod, these six guys right here. Okay. These are called your emotional aspects of the Sphera. Okay. We term this, the terminology of this is called Ze'er Anpin. Okay. For those people that are Chabad, you say a prayer on Friday night and you mention Ze'er Anpin, right? Do you say it also during Zmiros? We say Ze'er Anpin a lot. It's, so to speak, this person that's combined, it's a, a spiritual person, so to speak, a part of Hashem, that makes up these six emotional things. The Zohar says specifically that Ze'er Anpin equals Yaakov Abinu. Yaakov equals Ze'er Anpin. Okay? It's a concept. It's an idea. I just want you to know it because now it's going to make more sense as we go through it. So, and we just learned also one more thing. I just want to point it out again. Tiferet is Yaakov Avinu. He is the middle. Tiferet represents beauty. Pe'er. It also represents emet, the truth. And I'm not talking about Paul Pierce. I'm talking about Yaakov. You know, that's a basketball joke. Okay. Um, <laughs> So, so Tiferet is Yaakov Avinu. Okay, fine. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go back. Oh my God, yes. We also are learning tonight. Thank you. We're learning tonight also in memory of Raizo Yochevet Bas Eliezer Yaakov her neshama should have an aliyah. Baruch atah Adonai Elohinu Melech Olam Bore Priya Gafen. Amen. 
Eliezer Yaakov. Wow. That's what you were reminded of. And Razel. Razel with my mom, Razel. Amazing. Cool. Wow. Okay. So now, are we, got, are we okay so far? We're rolling? Okay. So now, Yaakov is Tefillin. Yaakov is Tiferet. I just showed you on the graph how that is, how he is Tiferet. Now, one more thing also, as we're going to talk about it, if you go to the next slide, right? That slide right there shows you exactly how Abraham, Itzhak, and Yaakov, you see the chart, you see Yaakov in the middle with Tiferet. Now, the next line is going to say like this. So he says, Klal Yud Hagvanim. What's Klal Yud Hagvanim? Gavanim is an encompassing of the colors. If you guys see the chart that says the supernal colors, every single one of those Sfirot, they all pertain to or present a specific color. Again, deep Kabbalistic ideas. Okay? So, so what does that mean? So if you have six of those Sfirot, that Yaakov Abinu makes up, a.k.a. Zeir Anpin, the six. Basically, the six is pretty much the essence of all the spheres. It's most of the spheres of the whole sphere chart. So therefore, if that's the main essence of the spheres, that's why he, Rabbi Nachman says that's an encompassing of the colors. It's like it's like all the colors of the sphere are all embalmed in Yaakov. He represents all six. He is Zeir Anpin. Okay. Therefore, Rabbi Nachman says, on that idea, he says, Bechina tefillin hanikrayim pe'er. And therefore, now he's connecting. Yaakov, a.k.a. Tiferet, a.k.a. the truth, a.k.a. encompassing of all the colors. By the way, Yaakov Avinu is the father of what? The 12 sons of Israel. He is the representation of Israel. He makes up all the colors. Right? Ironically, you think about it, Yaakov gave a multicolored coat to Yosef, interestingly enough, right? Which meant that he really wanted him to continue. He was his favorite, but he also he wanted he knew that he was like him. He makes up all the colors, right? Now he says he's connecting it again to Tzfilin. Why is Tzfilin compared to Yaakov Avinu, a.k.a. Tiferet, Sphira? Why? Because he says... To fill him, he crying per air. And now we go to the next slide. Look at the picture with the tefillin on it. This is a pasuk from the book from from Masechet Brachot, and it says, "I'll read it in English." A mourner is obligated in all the mitzvahs mentioned in the Torah, except for the mitzvah to put on tefillin, from which a mourner is exempt. So if I'm mourning, why we didn't? I remember I didn't wear I wouldn't wear the tefillin. As a term, splendor. Splendor means what? Per air. And it's stated with regard to tefillin. There's a pasuk he's using from the pasuk of Ezekiel. In Ezekiel it says, Make no mourning for the dead. Bind your splendor upon yourself. Put that pe'er on you. What does the putting the pe'er on you mean? The, the Masech Brachon, the Gemara says, Oh, the pe'er that they're talking about? That's tefillin. Ah, okay. So pe'er, splendor. It's a beautiful thing that you're putting on your head. This is, By the way, we're going to walk out tonight. Having a new appreciation for its filling, you're going to be so careful with its filling now. After we finish tonight's class, besides eating more properly, you're going to think about filling a lot. Okay, so filling equals pe'er. It's a splendor. I showed you a pasuk from the Gemara, bringing a pasuk from Ezekiel, showing you, supporting you why pe'er is to fill in. But you know, if you look at the next slide, you look at the next one. Look, pe'er, aka splendor beauty. It's the same word as tiferet. You guys see that? Tiferet has the same letters, the same letters as Pe'er. So here we go. A.K.A. Tiferet equals Tefillin. If Pe'er is Tefillin, Tiferet is its Tefillin. Okay? So you're seeing how Rabbi Nachman is just like connecting, bing, 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 connecting all the dots very nicely. And then he says, and this is another one that everyone's going to be like, oh, Michael, did you bring this one up? Yep, I did. Rabbi Nachman brought it up. Oh, by the way, sorry. He says, "Kamo shekatu perecha chavosh." So he brought you that puzzle from Ezekiel. Put on your peer, which we just learned, man. Put on your tefillin. Peer is beautiful. It's splendor. Now, Rinachman now says, "The ikar ashirud ba me'emet." And where does wealth come from? Money. It comes from emet, from the truth. 
This is what our sages taught. And this we learn in Masechet Shabbat. By the way, for those who have this last, last page on, again, just to look at it, look at all the concepts. We have Tefillin. We have Pe'er Tiferet. This is a good review for you. Encompassing Colors, Yaakov Avinu, Emet the Truth, Divine Favor. All these are all plug and plays. Okay? So now he brings you a pasuk from Masechet Shabbat. And it says specifically... The most important part says wealth stems mainly from truth. As our sage is taught, truth stands. We learned this in our class before, but I think it's so amazing. We'll bring it up again. Guys, look at the word emet. Emet, right here, means truth. Truth stands. Look at the bottom part of each single letter. If you look at the bottom part of a single letter, look what they have. They all have two legs. Aleph has two legs. Mem has two legs. Toph has two legs. The truth stands, right? The wording that we use in the, in the, in the, in the Gemara says, Kushtakaye. Kushtakaye means truth stands. Okay, so now you want to tell me that wealth comes from truth? Okay, why is that also? Why are you comparing truth to that? By the way, in the, the next, next slide, you'll see. Look at the word Sheker. Sheker is falsehood. Does falsehood stand? Shin, it's got one leg. Reish has got one leg. Interesting, you look at the Kuf, and you might say he's got kind of two legs, right? Here's a new insight that Rabbi Nachman also taught in a different chapter. He says something like this. You want to make, you want to tell somebody a lie and they'll believe it? Put some truth into it. So I can give you, like, by the way, don't take my advice. I'm just telling you, this is what Rabbi Nachman says. He goes, that's why when somebody tells me something and like, Maybe like out of like the three things that they said about the person, one of them is true and two of them are false. Because of the fact that they got one of those letters, it's got kind of like two legs, it's still believable. You can actually believe it. That's the concept of Sheker. Okay? That's what Sheker shows you. So therefore, now that being said, going back, the rabbi said specifically, Kushtakai, true stance. And by the way, Okay. And this is what our sages thought. All the substances is at their feet. This is the Pasuk in Deuteronomy. Look at the Pasuk in Deuteronomy because we're going to learn another concept. Of what does it mean to stand up? Right? The famous song, I'm still standing. What is that all about? What does it mean? Look at the Pasuk in English. What he and what he did to the Tan and Abiram, who was the Tan and Abiram, the sons of Korah. Sons of Elias, son of Ruin, when the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them. Remember, they were all swallowed when they went against Moshe Rabbeinu. Along with their households, their tents, and all the substances at their feet. What does that mean, all the substances at their feet? Look at Masech Psachim 119. Rabbi Eliezer said, what does it mean, the substances at their feet? The Gemara says, refers to a person's money, that stands him up on his own two feet. You want to stand up on your own two feet? A person needs money. You need wealth. Oh, what else stands up on two feet? Emet stands up on two feet. Yeah? So we see that the word kum, stand up, you need money. Okay? You want to have money? You got to live a life of truth. You got to have emet in your life. No sheker. Now, with that being said, Rabbi Nachman then says, And that's also what our sage is taught. This is another Pasuk in Deuteronomy. Your life will hang in the balance. This is a Pasuk that's a scary one. It says, you shall be in terror night and day with no assurance of survival. Your life will hang in the balance. What does Masechet Brachot say? Well, what does that mean? Your, hang, your life will hang in the balance. The Gemara resumes its discussion of tefillin. It's talking about tefillin. He's taking a pasuk from Deuteronomy, and the Gemara is, Rabbi Nachman just telling look what the Gemara says on that. Gemara says, Rabbi Hanina said, I saw Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi hang his tefillin. The Gemara raises an objection. It was taught in a brighta, that one who hangs his tefillin will have his life hang in the balance. 
Meaning if I take the fill in and I got to, I don't know, go somewhere or whatever, and I hang it on a hanger instead of like putting it in a box, you do that. It's so dangerous that you're literally putting your life in the, in the balance. Your life is on the line by doing something like that. Okay. It's a very scary statement. And the rabbis were not messing around when they said that. That's one interpretation of what the rabbi said means your life will hang in the balance. What we're trying to connect here is life, life with tefillin. We just learned that your life and hangs in the balance means if you tefillin are hanging, a.k.a. your life, a.k.a. what's life, what makes you stand up, how do you live, livelihood. Your wealth, that's what helps you to live your life. You need, a person needs to live with money. You need to, that's how you live, right? So to fill in equals life equals livelihood, okay? That's one proof from the Gemara. And then Rabbi Nachman says, alternatively, another option, he says, There's another Pasuk, and we learn this in Masachet Benachot. That's for you, Menachem. And it says, this is someone who has to purchase grain from the market. Look at the slide. Oh, I sent the wrong one. Okay, no problem. So this pasuk in, in Masechet Menachot talks about, look what it says. This is someone who has to purchase grain from the market. What does that mean? Back in the day, right, if I'm a farmer, I got my crops in the back. I'm chilling. I'm eating my food. I'm good. But if I didn't have a farm... I got to go get my crops. So I got to go to the market. What happens if there's no crops in the market? I'm in trouble because I ain't got no food. That's literally what it means, right? We learn in that context, okay, that literally what the Maseka was talking about regarding how someone wants to purchase grain from the market, it was also talking about if a person hangs up his tefillin, that's what it's like. It's like someone who has to go purchase grain from the market. You are going to, it's, it's a, it's a symbolism of no wealth. I ain't got no crops in the back of my house. I got to go to the market. That's what the Gemara says. That's another interpretation from the Gemara. Now you have two interpretations of Gemara, which represent filling wealth. If you don't treat it right, your livelihood is in trouble. What does that mean automatically? Boy, oh boy, we better get our filling checked immediately. Forget about that hanging. You have to treat your tefillin with respect. You just I just explained to you that it's like your life, your livelihood. It's everything. That's a big, it's a big Indian to learn to come out with it. Rabbi Nachman finishes and he says, Chayinu, Shehadalut. In other words, poverty results. pegam From a blemish of the tefillin. pegam shall emet which is a blemish of truth. So what do we say? Again, and with this, we wrapped up the class today. We just learned. To fill in equals life, equals livelihood. To fill in equals pe'er, beauty. Beauty also pe'er represents who? Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu represents emet, truth. I showed you how to fill in was truth. You see how it, emet equals Hashem putting his, shining his countenance on you which means he's doing good things for you, which means your shefa blowing on you. That's what you want. That's why the Kohanim, when you do the first bracha, you say, what does that correlate to? Parnasa. When the Kohanim is saying that, that should be your thought process, right? You know what that means? Hashem should shine his face upon you. It means not only should you be making Parnasa, you should be able to keep it, to keep it. That's what it means. That's what you're supposed to be thinking about when they're giving you the bracha. So we're seeing here many ideas and many concepts, but you just I just took you on a world tour of how Rabbi Nachman goes from boom, 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 concept, concept, concept. And with that, we can just walk away with several ideas just to walk off tonight. Number one, if you haven't washed yet, maybe you should wash. Maybe have a little bit of bread, nothing crazy. But why am I washing? Because I want to praise Hashem. I just want to praise Hashem. I want to thank Hashem, and that's it. If you like the bonus credits of saying, oh, well, Hashem will do a miracle for me, that's nice, but that's not the, you know, we don't th we don't think like that. We know that through the sidelines. We know that tzaddikim, think about tzaddikim, right? 
these are miracle makers, right? Miracles happen through them. Ask me how much they can eat. You look at them, you, you, you know about them. They eat morsels of food. They don't eat much. Why? They don't eat it. They're spiritually high and they're another planet, but they're really connected to Hashem. They don't have to eat, right? There was a, a very famous breast of a Rab, Nach, Rab, Rab Nachman of Tochinen, and he, of Tochin, and he specifically, the story with him was he, any type of food that he had, like he never put salt on his food. He would just get the food, eat a little bit, thank you so much, and he's done. Why? Because it's not about the food. It's not about the taste. I don't care about the pleasures. I'm eating to eat, to satisfy myself so I can serve Hashem and praise Him. That's it. If we can apply that concept, right? And now I'm going to say, I'm talking to myself now because I need to talk to myself a lot about this, right? And think about it constantly. You should have like a bracelet that always has reminders on myself all the time for all these different things. But really, don't eat that extra portion of food that looks like we have so much food right now. It's scary. Like I, I, I feel like I'm going <laughs> to, I, I can eat a lot of food right now. I have to learn control. And if it's going to make all this food, learn how to control. I don't want judgments on me. Rabbi Nachman is very clear. You overeat, judgments come your way. It's a good way of losing weight, no? That's number one. And number two, based on that idea that we try to eat to serve Hashem, to do things the proper way, keep in mind tefillin. Keep in mind the sanctity of tefillin, the holiness of tefillin. If you haven't checked your tefillin, check your tefillin. Check your tefillin. Make sure they're kosher. You understand the severity, how important it is to have kosher tefillin because it's your livelihood. It's your life. Right? So with that being said, um, next week we'll be speaking how this connects to the concept of the land of Israel, how the land of Israel is very much connected to life of Kedush and holiness with food. Amazing ideas again. And Bezrat Hashem will do that next week. And uh, with that being said, I thank all you guys here that are watching tonight. Bezrat Hashem, and you'll join me all next week as well. And have a wonderful night. For those that are going to stay here, we're going to do one last thing which is